Okay, I'm about to be rescued by Jordan. Hopefully. Come on, help dog, help dog. Hey! Hey, Jordan! Help, 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 help! You can hang on to the, his fur. Okay, I'm on to his fur. <laughs> I'm being pulled in by the noof. Hi guys, and welcome to a Go Roughly pilgrimage. We're visiting people who are doing extraordinary activities with their dogs. We're doing this to commemorate Moxie, our German Shepherd who rode on the back of my motorcycle with me. So we're celebrating a special bond that people have formed with their dogs, the same bond that I formed with Moxie. So in the last episode, we visited Sarah Carson, who mm -hmm. is doing, who does incredible stunt dog activities. I mean, that was just phenomenal the way those dogs are just trained and high energy and doing it. Uh, from there, we visited, like, this group of sort of three musketeers. Mm. Of uh, search and rescue. Yeah, it was really, really something um, to hear how they do article detection mm -hmm. and... Uh, Human remains detection. Absolutely. Finding drowning victims. Yeah. Absolutely unique. impressive. And so that's where we pick up here in this episode. We're going to continue on that. Then from there, we have to sort of break off, right? We have to go our separate ways. Yes, our pilgrimage divides. So, um, co-pilot in waiting, Whimsy, is back in L.A. staying with uh, with my dad at his place, and he's a bit under the weather. She's been under the weather, and they're just not doing great. So that's concerning. And so we decide that I'm going to go uh, there. And then I'm going to continue. I still had one more activity I had scheduled up uh, just north of Portland, um, which is the Newfoundlander Water Rescue. So I'm going to go and do that. Greg has to ride back down to Los Angeles to figure out what's going on with our pup. Stick around. I'm Jen Reeson. I'm an assistant team leader for our search and rescue team. This old guy is Storm. He's eight. Hank just turned two and India's 10 months. My mm -hmm. husband was in law enforcement and he had a narcotics canine. And my son watched him and decided he wanted to be a canine handler. So when he was 14, he raised all the money, digging ditches and clearing fields, and went and bought Storm. But we knew at 14, that he'd be going in the Marines when he turned 18. Oh, okay. So when he started training Storm, I started training behind him. So when he was ready to leave, it'd be a smooth transition. It took me six months okay. and Storm and I got certified as a team in human remains detection. So we've been working for four years now. Oh, wow. Going on our fifth. Okay. And he'll retire next year. And we take him out and we get started. A lot of times we'll read the wind, figure out which direction it's coming from and try to put the dog's nose into the wind makes it a lot better for them to pick up and easier. If we're gonna grid and the wind's coming from, say, this direction, we'll grid this way. Anything up here along the way is gonna blow over towards their nose. Storm is also a medical alert dog for me. I have chronic migraine. Okay. And I had a Great Dane before Storm. Oh, wow. And she naturally started alerting. And by two years old, he was alerting to my migraines and going and getting the medicine. Or my great dane thought she was too much of a queen and she'll tell you but she, she was won't gonna get it and lay with me but you have two-legged <laughs> peons to go get that medicine he would actually go get my medicine and bring it to me and now when he alerts if we're home he goes and just gets my medicine bag and brings it to me Aww. and when he retires it corresponds with when my son comes back gets out and so he'll get to go home and live with his boys oh yeah. that's sweet because he he loves me to death and we have a tight bond but he loves his boy <laughs> yeah good boy Hank is crazy about his B-A-L-L. -L. Can't say the word. Okay. Um, that he lives for it. He, and that's what you're looking for when you're looking for a, a search and rescue dog is, is someone high drive. Mm -hmm. I get him ready. I lean down over him and I say, they've got your, they've got your, yes. 
And then <laughs> I tell him to go S E A R C H. Oh, okay. And he is gone, and he is gonna find anyone that's out on that hill. Put your hand in my hand, darling. Say go. So I'm playing dead, and Hank has to find me. He's a wilderness air scent dog, and he is going to have to find me based on my scent. You've got the trailing aspect of them, and they'll get right on the trail of where somebody's walked in and just take off and go to them. Where the other ones will work an area back and forth and back and forth, which you may see with this dog. So we had a nine-year-old little girl that was missing at night, um, scary, you know, cold. And so we threw him out as a Hail Mary and he found her. We get a satisfaction out of it over giving the family. Yeah. Sometimes they don't turn out the best way. It's not pleasant. And it's always hard because, well, you saw with the dogs, it's a party when they find it. So now you've got the family sitting over here and your dog just succeeded. And so you learn how to party discreetly. And um, most of the family comes up and thanks us for closing and, and finding it anyways. But it's still, you want to be as respectful as you can. What an interesting mix of skills that these dogs have. So from wilderness air scent of being able to find live people to human remains detection, people who are, are dead, the ones that like are, have drowned, that one is really cool. Being able to search and recover is really amazing. And then the article detection, like being able to find firearms or casings or knives or things that are involved in crime. How interesting. And like all three of them like have such unique dogs. And I love how they shared the, the idea that they, it's about what the dogs want. They don't push them to do a certain type of activity. And if they've got an affinity for something and they love it, then that's what they're gonna do. I started training him in human remains detection. Oh, okay. Instead of tracking and trailing, and that's where he loves it. That's his, his forte and where he's happy. It's his happy place. Just a quick timeout to tell you about a Go Roughly Pilgrimage post game show. So we've teamed up with Wolfgang Bakery, and one of their experts is going to sit down with us and answer all of our questions and your questions that come up as we visit these extraordinary activities. So leave your comment down below, yep. email us at info at go roughly, and we'll answer as many as we can. So what happens now? Change of plans. And our peacocks. And our peacocks have chimed in. <laughs> Real life kicks in for Go Roughly at any given time. We're supposed to be on an around the world amazing adventure, and yet real life showed up as a chicken bus smashing into me on the Pan American Highway. Then it showed up as a routine surgery that ended up leading to Moxie's passing. And now, in a much less dramatic fashion, Whimsy is pooping better, but my dad is definitely under the weather. And he's not feeling well, and I think everyone's feeding off of each other. So we have decided that Greg is going to go south. I, on the other hand, have another activity up in the north of Portland area. I'm going to go and see New Feet Water Rescue, and I get to actually be in the water and have a new rescue me. <laughs> I am super grateful for the cruise control on the motorcycle because that is giving my hand a break just when I need it. Although I am trying really hard to use it as little as possible because the whole point here is to strengthen that hand so that I don't need it anymore. It is 8.30 in the evening. I have taken a stop by the I-5 with less than an hour to go because this is when you're achy, when you're tired, the light is dimming and you can't see as well. And so it's a good time to take a break and regroup and get fresh for the final approach. So sort of a ridiculous thing happened as I was putting my key in the ignition to get going. The little pendant that holds Moxie's ashes actually came apart. This is or ashes that are going the rest of the way around the world with me. It twists together like a screw and somehow it has loosened over these thousands and thousands of kilometers. And one half of it slid down between the ignition piece and her ashes came out. 
I started to unscrew things and see if I can get at it. And then I kind of realized, in a way, Moxie just baptized my bike. She's, she's with me. She's, I'm, I'm riding with her ashes. I am solo today. I am going back up to Horseshoe Lake Bay so that I can see the Newfoundlanders do their water rescue. I do all things dog, so I started with police canines and tracking drug detection. And then I shifted my focus. I got a Newfoundland and he was perfect and did everything. And I thought it was so neat to keep learning and learning what the breed can do. My focus as a trainer now is tracking water rescue and draft. Those are my favorite. Grace has all the titles. Newfoundlands need activity. They need uh, exercise. They need interaction. They're very social animals. They love people. Newfs tend to want to please. So they're trying to find out what is it you want and do I want any part of it? Because they're smart enough to say, yeah, no. They are very smart, so most of them are easy to train. Back, back, back. Can you do that? Yes, nailed it. She, at a very young age, could open the fridge and open the drawer and, and help herself. Um, she opens the glove box. She opens ice chests, any of them. They're not safe. Newfoundland water rescue training. It is one of my favorite things to do with a new Draft work is awesome, but water rescue training is very inspiring. When you're in a boat, and you see a dog towing the boat with three people in it to shore, it's inspiring. You see their form, it's fabulous. They can outswim a person. If you look at his paw, you'll see that, hold still, you'll see that he's got webbing between his toes. They spread their foot out, you know, and they get a pretty powerful stroke. And then they use their that big tail when it gets wet, it serves as a rudder. So they can kind of help steer themselves with the big tail. So that's why we're here doing exercises that the breed was bred for, which is their instinct to rescue people in the water, whether they know they need it or not. They're really good swimmers, they're good thinkers, and the Newfoundland Club of America has these three sets of exercises to bring that out from the breed and keep it going. Dogs often have trouble learning how to hold their breath underwater. So underwater retrieve teaches them how to do that. Yes! <laughs> Boy. Life ring is an advanced exercise. There are three stewards in the water, and the idea is that the dog takes a life ring to the person who's calling and ignores the other two victims that don't need help. So he's only going to the person that's needing help, brings the life ring, swims around, person grabs onto the life ring and catches a free ride to shore. How awesome! It's so cool when it works. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to be rescued by Jordan. Hopefully. Come on, help dog, help dog. Hey! Hey, Jordan! Help, 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 Come on, big guy. Come on. Help. You can hang on to that, his fur. Okay, I'm on to his fur. <laughs> I'm being pulled in by the noof. Come on! Come on, boy, bring her to safety! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay! When these guys are puppies, they really tug on your heart. They're pretty special dogs. Jake! I'm not Grace's favorite person, isn't that terrible? My dad is, um, that she works with every day. But her, her spirit is very similar to me. Kind of a low tolerance for a lot of nonsense. And so yeah, you'll see she'll, if any dog sniffs or anything, she needs to teach a lesson real quick. Today was extraordinarily hectic here, very distracting for the dogs, but it's just fun. And oh my gosh, I spent the morning out on the beach with my dog. <laughs> I know, it's fantastic. <laughs> that was just, that was just like my favorite thing. They are just such gentle giants and you know, they, they were all so loving. I've got slobber all over everything, <laughs> but it was, it was the best experience. One, two, three, four. 
I am on my way to uh, Horseshoe Lake Horseshoe Lake Park where we're gonna be this morning I'm here for the new feet water rescue <clears throat> yeah I want the info you hold it I'll chew it <laughs> yeah, that's how we have to do it at home too huh but Hannah grabbed the oar and then everybody heads for shore any way they can so oh, this toys. is new size thank you for thinking I, of that I was thinking about new thank size. you yes Dog here! Take it, take it, take it! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Get, get, get! Dog here! Take it, you're a 